So today I read about the sad news that the great classical guitarist Julian Bream passed away. And I wanted to stop and make a short video to share some memories and some things about this great guitarist. If you're a classical guitarist, I'm sure that you've heard of him before, possibly have seen him before, if you're um, at least middle-aged, like I am. Um, if you've never seen him before, I'm sure you've heard records of him, uh, recordings of him. Uh, he has quite a few videos out. Um, you know, it's ironic that right now I'm in the middle of a video series in which I talk about this book um, titled Julian Bream, A Life on the Road. It's quite uh, sad and ironic that right in the middle of um, me reading this book again, I read this book some 30 years ago, some 25 years ago for the first time, and I'm revisiting it and I'm actually making a video series. I think I've done three episodes so far. I place links at the bottom if you want to take a look at those videos. And I was planning to do a fourth video on chapter 9 alone sometime this week or next. And then early this morning I learned about the sad news that Julian Bream has actually passed away. Um, just a few things to share about him. Um, he was um, like Segovia, like Andre Segovia. He was... Um, Definitely one of the fathers of the classical guitar in the 20th century. Like Segovia, he was self-taught and um, he took the instrument on stages, uh, large and small, all around the world at a time where, at a time when nobody was able to do so. Uh, again, he was born in 1933 and uh, so his uh, activity uh, spent a good uh, 60 to 70 years uh, as early as uh, the late 40s and uh, 50s and moving on up um, he did retire a few years back uh, but he did play well into the late 90s I believe um, he enlarged the repertoire, improved and enlarged the repertoire considerably uh, by, by, by doing uh, transcriptions of pieces written for different instruments like the keyboard, you know, the harpsichord, piano, so and so, and also by commissioning a lot of works uh, from contemporary composers, uh, such as uh, Benjamin Britten, uh, William Walton, uh, people like that. Uh, he did try to get Stravinsky to write a piece for the guitar or for the lute actually and there's a video somewhere if you look enough uh, if you look hard enough you can find it where he actually goes to meet Stravinsky himself and he sits with him and plays uh, some um, some Renaissance Pavan for him I believe and uh, so he was very active in trying to expose the instruments to very large audiences and to audiences of musicians that would not otherwise be exposed to the instrument and its music. Um, there's a whole chapter in this book where he talks about his uh, commissions with such composers. So I think I talked about that in the last video I made on this. You can look at that third episode, I believe. Um, he made tons of recordings. Um, I remember... Um, somewhere in the 90s, that I think it was RCA, if I'm not mistaken, they published a 300 recording series, If I'm, or, or was it 30? I'm, I'm, I don't want to make a mistake, but something with three, it was either 30 or 300 uh, recordings of Julian Bream. And um, so that was, that was quite something. And uh, on a more personal, uh, on a more personal note, I did, see Julian Brim live. Uh, it was a concert in the 90s. At the time I was a student of classical guitar performance at DePaul University in Chicago and he was brought in by the Segovia Classical Guitar Society and um, that concert came with a few events uh, throughout the week 
uh, he did not do a master class. A lot of the people that uh, came to the Segovia series, and I believe that series is still happening at Northwestern University, um, a lot of these artists would offer master classes, and I've played in some of those, like Oscar Gillia, I played for him, and um, uh, Tom Guthrie, I believe his name was, I played for him. He taught out in Arizona, and um, people like David Russell and um, uh, people, of, people of that uh, renown and people at that level of playing. Um, and but, but anyways, Julian Breen came there at least once, and uh, he did not do a master class. Uh, he rarely did. And um, but he did do an interview, and it was like a board. It was like a almost like a round table on the stage, where we had Julian Bream and a local guitar maker that is actually world uh, world renowned. Uh, his name is Richard Brunet. He was in the uh, he was on the stage in, as part of the discussion. Uh, Mark Maxwell, who was my guitar uh, professor, Ann Waller, who is his wife, she's the still the guitar professor at Northwestern, and it was like four or five people on the stage. Uh, having a conversation uh, on different topics related to the classical guitar and uh, I remember them at some point talking about instruments and the, the thickness that the top of a guitar should be and uh, there was a little bit of an argument between him and the luthier uh, a friendly argument between him and uh, Richard Brunet and uh, a disagreement about the thickness of the top of a guitar and uh, so uh, Richard said well I have a uh, I forget what the tool is called to measure the thickness of the top of a guitar and he actually took it out and measured the guitar it was quite a funny moment there and I forget who won the argument but it was a friendly argument uh, so that was, that was a quite interesting and memorable interview um, he then played a concert uh, about a day later uh, and I remember I had seats in the second row uh, and that was great great concert um, he did, um, I can't know for sure how old he was, he was in the mid-90s, so you can do the math, uh, but he was not a young man by any means, and the concert was a bit of a struggle for him, I could tell, at least physically, uh, but he did play very well. Um, the only piece I remember from the concert was uh, something by Man Pao, and he played that, I think it was the first piece in the concert, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, after the concert, uh, he was in the large, this was a big stair concert hall, which now is named something else, and he was doing autographs. And I do remember standing in line and shaking his hand and uh, changing, you know, exchanging a couple of words, and he did say thank you or something like that. And he, I have a signed autograph somewhere, I can't find it, uh, but that was quite memorable. So I did meet Julian Bream, I did listen to him play, I did speak with him for about I don't know six seconds so I can brag about that and uh, it's kind of a sad day for guitarists everywhere because he was uh, one of the greatest that ever lived and um, he did a lot of good for the instrument um, um, he um, he will be remembered for a long time by guitarists for sure and um, I don't think that this will be my last reading of the book um, it's my second reading, and I'm in chapter 9. I think there's 12 chapters in there, uh, but I'm sure I'll read it again. And uh, just a little funny comment, when I bought this a couple of months ago, I talked about this in the first video in the, in the series, uh, this was very hard to find online to purchase. And uh, I found copies going for as high as $350 or something. and. Uh, I did manage to find a copy for like $34. This is the one I bought. I think it was from uh, thriftbooks.com and it was like $34. So that, that was awesome. It's hard, it's hardcover and pretty good condition. There are notes in here. There's highlights pretty much all over the place. But the book is in good condition. So I'm gonna keep this for a while. Um, it's probably gonna be even harder to find this online. Uh, moving forward uh, But anyways, I just wanted to make a short video today uh, the great Julian Bream uh, passed away 
and he will be missed and he was um, a great guitarist uh, I can't say much about him as a person because I did, I did not know him um, just from reading his book and certain comments he made here and there he did seem like a like a happy fellow and um, I don't know much about his family life and stuff like that but uh, as a musician and as a guitarist uh, he certainly was one of the best uh, given to us in the 20th century and uh, I sure have a lot to learn from him and um, yeah that's my video for today so Julian Bream unfortunately passed away at the age of 87 uh, and he will be missed thank you so much for watching the video again if you want to check out my uh, book video my book review video book discussion I guess uh, on this uh, you can check the three links at the bottom and I think I'm going to do two more in that series because I decided to do chapter 9 by itself where he talks about uh, the, the art of recording albums and some of the struggles he had to deal with as he of course was involved with so many recordings um, so yeah thank you for watching the video and uh, uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, you're welcome to do that. Thank you for that and hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.